Were you a child star before the original Full House? Uh, I did a lot of commercials and stuff when I was young, before Full House. I Really, Full House was one of my first big television gigs. I sure. did, uh, I don't know if you remember the show, The Hogan Family. Yeah. Uh, I actually did a guest appearance on The Hogan Family as uh, Pamela Poole, who was Mrs. Poole, the next door neighbor's niece. Hmm. And it was an episode where she was watching me and then she like throws her back out or something. And then Jason Bateman and um, yeah, the other wow. two, Jeremy Licht and uh, Danny, mm, I can't remember his last name. Anyway, they take over, wind up babysitting me. But I, that was my very first TV role. I was four and a half. And it was the same producers uh, that were doing Full House, the same executive producers, Miller Boyette. And they loved what I did, and they cast me on Full House from that. I never actually auditioned for the show. I basically did a guest appearance on Valerie, and they were like, this is who we want for Stephanie. Jesus. So it was, I was cool. incredibly lucky. And before that, I got to do, I did a Sizzler commercial that was really successful. Like, the ad company wound up giving me a dog when I was, like, for because the the commercial was so successful and it was like I kind of got they gave you a dog they gave me a because like that, it was BBD they and O you? they gave me a dog because the, the it did so well and because originally they had a boy cast for the part and they brought me in as a backup and I did it and they and this poor little boy had to just stand to the side all day while they completely changed the entire commercial to be a daughter. They didn't even have a name for me, so they just used Jody. Like, I mean, it was, wow. yeah, and, and it was a it, Sizzler all-you-can-eat shrimp commercial, and it was a really hugely popular thing, and so. Television commercials have always been, like, a really, like, good-paying thing, right? A good national commercial is awesome. Like, you know, right. people that, when you see, like, those people in commercials that are doing the, na you know, the, the whatever the insurance progressive. one, progressive, all that shit. Right. They, are, I mean, they're, they're doing great off of some I had a, commercials. I had a buddy that did a Zima commercial and he got picked <laughs> up and he made like 90 grand yeah, off of it. Yeah, you, you make a ton off of na national commercials. I don't know how it is now. I mean, the business is so different now from when I started. Like, if it's, it's just vastly <laughs> different, but. If it's based on impressions, I would imagine that it's still very lucrative. Yes. Well, I mean, now, you know, if Instagram, Facebook, all that shit is just based. Oh, can right. I say that? Yeah, you can say it. Okay. You can say. Thank it's a wild God. ride. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, if I can't say the word fuck on Steve O's podcast, <laughs> I don't know what kind of planet right. yeah. I'm living on. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it, that was my introduction into it. And I was four years old and then by five I was working on Full House and then that was Oh shit, you were five when Full five. House started? Damn. Yeah. I was four and a half when I did Valerie I and was, then I got cast I was five years old. I picture you as like the older sister. No. You know, like. she, Candace was ten I was five and then Ashley and Mary-Kate were nine months old. Damn. Yeah. It shows how much I know. Fuck. Well, fuck. What's that like walking onto a set at five? Like, I mean at that point do you even know What's going on? Oh yeah, I was. I, it was funny. I actually just today I ran into um, Joel Zwick, who directed tons of episodes of Full House, the original. I met him when I was four and a half years old. Uh, he directed our pilot. I've known him forever. Ran into him ra randomly today, but he still talks about. It. He's like at five years old, like you sat at the table reading table you read that script with everybody else like you were on it you had everybody you laughing could read like, at five i could read a little before my third birthday unbelievable yeah did you I, like that attention? i loved it i'm kind of i'm a little bit of a nerd and and so yeah i've, I've loved reading my whole life dude I, I was on an airplane recently and i watched an hbo documentary about child stars mm -hmm. and it was like kind of pretty dark like the whole it was this, an indictment of like you know pushing kids into show business right which i th you know it's unfortunate well it's not it is and it isn't i guess my experience was so vastly different growing up in this business like yes there are some things that come along with being famous at a young age yeah but my overall experience was so wonderful and positive and like I have this family of people 35 years later that I'm still friends with and like still are my family. 
I never experienced any abuse. My parents always were like, if this isn't what you love, we're not going to make you do it. It was never my parents' idea. Like, I wanted to right, perform. Right, but does a four-year-old say, I want to go on an audition? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. I was be- when I was three years old, I told my mom, I would watch TV, and I'd say, Mommy, I want to be a modeler, which was the people that I saw on TV. And she was like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like, my parents were very hesitant. I mean, my dad... I, you know, he was a superintendent of a gypsum plant in Long Beach Harbor. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Of a what plant? A gypsum plant, drywall. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never heard, I don't think I've ever heard the word gypsum. Yeah. Is so, it like a drywall union? Uh, it's like I don't electrician, know. plumber, I gypsum? Don't, I'm, I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> so. I think it was, falls under like dock workers or something. I don't know. But my dad, you know, had a very blue collar job. He was a handyman all my life. Um, and my you mom were in was Los a stay at home mom. Huh? And you were in Los Angeles? We were in uh, like Lakewood, was where I f- we first lived, which is technically LA County, but pretty far south, kind of right. next to Long Beach. And uh, so my mom put me in dance classes, and like, you know, at, at the, my first recital, I was in the second row, and apparently I thought the girl in front of me was just fucking it all up, so I like kind of pushed her out, and I was like, I got this. And like, what, you know, my mom was like, I mean, maybe she should perform. She really loves it. Right. And I did. And I, I came alive. And still to this day, I, I don't think I ever feel more at home than when I'm on set working, like having all of that going on. It just feels like totally comfortable to me. And I never stopped. It, you know what? In high school, I stopped wanting to audition as much. And my mom was like, all right, cool. Like, if this isn't what you want to do, I'm not going to drive you around everywhere and want it for you. And I took some time off. I went to performing arts high school and that was it. So it was always my idea though. And I didn't have a terrible experience, but I know so many people have because, and I've seen it. I've seen parents that want it more than their kids. Right. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to say in high school, I didn't want to audition anymore where I, I, you think of child stars and, and the dynamic that's sort of like kind of dark and is that like maybe when they grow up a little bit, people don't find them cute anymore. And then they're right. sort of like maybe like 12 years old and feeling all washed up kind of a thing. I mean, it was definitely an adjustment. It, you know, at 13 years old, I was finishing middle school, which is just shit for anyone. You know what I mean? Middle school just kind of sucks. Right, okay. I, have, I have two kids that are going in my one is in eighth grade and one is going into sixth grade and it's just the most awkward time of your life right yeah so I finished the show and I'm starting high school so it was just I mean that time of your life when you're like who the fuck am I you know like what what do what do I want what am I doing and I went to a the Orange County High School for the Arts so I was in musical theater okay so I still had that performing <laughs> outlet and I did party of five I did a few I did like a, a six episode guest starring thing on Party of Five when I was a little bit older. and I thought you were going to say, I did party my ass off. <laughs> well, I did. I mean, I did. But that was like later in my, you know, right. like high school and, and 20s when I really but were acted you, like an asshole. Were you still going to grade school while you were filming? Mm-hmm. They didn't have, like by law, you didn't have like a teacher on set? I and- had both. Our producers, again, really wanted, were really involved and engaged in how the kids on the show we're doing. So I really wanted to go to regular school in the morning and because we lived in Orange County and like traffic sucked getting up there at eight, we worked it out to where, I think my first season I did my school on set just because we were kind of getting into the groove of it. But after that, like I went to school in the morning, we worked 40 weeks, so Monday I was at school all day. Tuesday, Wednesday, I went to school until lunch and then got picked up and Thursday and Friday I did my work on set. So I had like, a foot in normal life, and I just went to a public school in Orange County, hmm. normal life, like, I didn't live some crazy, you know, yes, I got to do really cool shit growing up, you know, but I also lived a very normal, grounded life, and I think that that really helped me be a halfway normal fucking person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. So if, if my math is right, you were 13 when you stopped doing Full House. You were five when it started. So it ran for eight years. It was eight years. We did eight seasons of that show. Yeah. And, and five seasons of Fuller House for Netflix. And so that means it's super syndicated. Like, did you get to renegotiate your contract after like so many years and get like back end and stuff? 
you don't get back end stuff, but you still get, you know, some residuals, but residuals, people think they're, you know, you're making right. like hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're like, it's, look, it's a nice little bonus of like, I can put a little bit of money aside, maybe, or pay my bills with it, right. but it's not, not everything that everyone thinks it is, you know? And now with Netflix and streaming, like, again, like I said, the business is so different. Like residuals aren't a thing anymore. Right. You get paid out up front. They pay you far less than, you know, they used wow. to on network shows. And you mm -hmm. get paid out and that's it. Like, that's you'll get maybe DVD sales and stuff like that. But it's, it, yeah, it's a very different business than it used to be. But yeah, I mean, look, Full House has been on the air ever since it started in 1986. Right. It's never been not on the air somewhere in the world. So that's crazy. It's called Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. And if you go on Amazon and type in Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole and order yourself a bottle, you'd be really helping me. Because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder. And that would mean a lot. So please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude.